Hello everybody, if you're following along this playlist, you know we are working on microcontrollers and MicroPython. So far we did cool things and then we realized that uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, this one, it doesn't support Wi-Fi. So if we want to work with uh, Wi-Fi, we either need uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W or ESP32 or ESP8266. Uh, I mean, I also have them here. And we can see the antenna here. So, I mean, it, it's a big sign of Wi Fi uh, being Wi Fi capable. However, there is a chance to make your Raspberry Pi Pico Wi Fi capable. And how? Via this small module, which is ESP01. So, what we're going to do. We're going to connect this one to uh, our board in here. I have a mini breadboard here and you can see everything is already, already set up. Uh, we're going to connect this one, but unfortunately this one is not breadboard friendly. As you can see, it, it, I mean, you cannot put it inside. This is why it's kind of like this floating in the air. We're going to connect this using 80 command with 80 command. What we can do, uh, we're gonna establish a connection to Wi-Fi. Also using UART, it's like a serial communication, we're gonna create a web base, web server. Then we're gonna have the web server and connection to the Wi-Fi. But what we're gonna do, since we are connected to the home or office or whatever, rather, we have IP address and we have web server. The second part is to have a sensor like this, so I've chosen BME680 to measure some elements of the room like temperature, pressure, humidity, gas and those stuff, then send them towards uh, the router by opening, I mean you can use Postman to get to do get API also, just open up a browser and like Google Chrome and just type the IP address, then you're gonna have your data. For troubleshooting purposes, uh, I added one LED here. So every time there is a query, there's a get request from your postman, your the other Raspberry Pi or from your browser, every time it goes through the process of getting the information and sending them, this LED will blink for me. So, I mean, in this way, I will know, okay, the process is running. Let's save some words go to the real board. This is the network diagram that we have and we want to work with that. It's pretty simple. So this one is the ground, which is connected to the ground. This one is three volt output. It is important here. BME680 and ESP01, they are uh, voltage sensitive. And the, this pin, which uh, provides five volt is not the one that we want. So in this case, we're gonna use this one, three volt. Wherever we see power, like VCC here or VCC here, we connect them to this one, three volt, ground to the ground. So we have ground, connect them to ground. LED for troubleshooting pin 16. These two, I'm gonna connect them to GP0 and GP1. And uh, this one, which it has SCL and SDA, so it's I2C communication to GP3 and four. So GP0, GP1, this one is ground. GP2, 3 and 4. This is the diagram. Okay, let's close this one and let's come here. So what do we have here? The first thing which is mandatory to have, I put also this one in the GitHub link. It's the mandatory library of uh, BME680. So we want this one, we download this one, put it here. Then to test how it works, I have a simple template here test sensor. So in test sensor, as you can see, so we import I2C because it's I2C communication. We set the pins here and we import whatever we have in BME 680. So we get the information and here we have our data. We get temperature, humidity, pressure, and gas. If I run this one, it works and it has a five seconds of sleep. It gives me my data every five seconds. And right now, actually, even though outside is kind of cold, but yeah, the weather is cool here. 
This is a sample script. I also put this one in the GitHub link. You can get it from that. Okay, main py and not to be confusing. It is the main one. Let's see if we run it, what will happen. First, it starts to analyze the information with 80 command. It gets some information from the device. The good part is that I added some comments here. You can see what every line uh, will do for you. Here we ask him to connect to this SSID with this password. It's trying to get connected. It said, there you go, got an IP address. And this is the IP address, 192.168.078. Look at that web server is about to start. It is running the web server. And now it should be working. Let me put it like this here to make some rooms and then make this one a little small like this what was the ip address uh, 192.168.078 so if i do 192.168.0.78 then press on enter look it says okay i'm working and it gives me the ambient temperature and here also we have some logs but if i bring my uh, face back let me come back in a smaller size okay here it is better. you let's run that thing again and we should be seeing the blink see we had the blink and also the information got updated it is this concept Every time, let me do it again. Every time that I do see, there's a blink here and there is a communication. So this one is working perfectly fine. And the text that you can have on your web server, it's on you and also the information that you're gonna get, it's on you. You can filter, you can remove or add whatever you want. It was just a simple demonstration that you can make your Raspberry Pi Pico with this setup Wi-Fi capable. I hope you find it useful. I searched a lot for that and I spent almost two days to make it happen. Uh, show me a thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and bye everyone. Bye bye. See you in the next video as well.